Whether you're looking for answers to specific life questions or simply hoping to become the best version of you possible, welcome to the Mental Breakdown and Psych Reg podcast, where we offer insight, information, and strategies based upon research and years of practice as psychologists. So sit back, have a listen, and get connected with our hosts, Dr. Bernie Wilkinson and Dr. Richard Marshall. Last week, we had a discussion on the relationship between stress and physical illness. And then we find this great article that says, you know what, there is this relationship, but your stress doesn't have to be that much, that high, before it to really have an effect on your body. That's right. The the discussion we had last week was major stressors, you know, Mm -hmm. things that you're obviously aware of. And then we run into this, this other article that says even minor distress Right. can put you mm-hmm. at risk for physical diseases. Right. Okay, Fascinating um, article and a fascinating study because of its size. Right. You know, that's, what, that's what impresses me about this one is that when you have 16,000 participants, you probably should listen because there's probably information in there that we should use. Yeah. So they mm-hmm. followed, um, collected data from 16,485 mm-hmm. participants over a three-year period. Mm-hmm. That's a lot of work. Do you know this... Mm-hmm. The, the database that they were using no. when you were there? Okay. Well, I, I've heard of the UK the UK Household Longitudinal Study. I've right. heard of that. Right. Um, and we've pulled some data um, articles that have talked about it before, but um, but it, has, it must be a massive study. It's an study. enormous study. I remember years ago they, they did it with uh, epilepsy because mm-hmm. I was working mm-hmm. in epilepsy at the time. and But I haven't used it since then. Yeah. But these are longitudinal studies. They track people over time. Right. And that's the beauty of this study is they're right. tracking the same people mm-hmm. over years. Right. Longitudinal studies usually mean that they that people are enrolled right. uh, at one point in their life. Mm-hmm. Um, oftentimes, you know, they oftentimes are enrolled at birth, and right. uh, the parents mm-hmm. will sign them up, and then they will be followed for years mm-hmm. and years for, for most of their life. And it's um, really valuable research. And data are collected every mm-hmm. year or every couple of years just to right. kind of um, see where people go, and that's how we get the data. That you know, if if this happened early in childhood, mm-hmm. then you know, then you have this relationship right. later in, in life. So right, and these are very expensive. This kind of longitudinal yeah. research with large numbers of people, it's very expensive research to do it. It, it re- usually requires government commitment. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Some of the European countries are better at it than we are, right. because the government's um, more the government is more involved in healthcare. Right. Um, but they want to track um, efficacy, mm-hmm. uh, effectiveness of procedures, and what happens long term. And so we typically don't do that in our country. Right. We rely on grants from right. other com- uh, from private companies or private foundations. And typically those grants are time limited. You right. know, you get two years of funding or three years of funding, or you might get five years of funding, and then there are cutbacks and you don't get renewed. Mm-hmm. Okay, So... Um, this study in England has been going on for years. Right. Um, we did this one time in this country. It was the Perry Preschool Project, mm-hmm. where we brought young children um, into programs when they were three and four, mm-hmm. children of, in poverty, low SES. And uh, we were able to follow them up into adulthood. Mm-hmm. And there, again, was valuable information in those longitudinal studies, but they're typically not, not right. done in our country. Right. Now, for this particular uh, research question. They were specifically looking at the relationship between psychological distress, right. uh, even minor psychological distress, right. and four chronic illnesses: uh, right. diabetes, arthritis, uh, lung disease, and cardiovascular disease. Right. Those were the mm-hmm. four uh, conditions that they were interested in. Right. Um, and so, and they also kind of included uh, some other lifestyle things mm-hmm. like diet and exercise and smoking and the, some right. of those kinds of things. Mm-hmm. And again. The finding, a, the, here's this quote. Right. It says, uh, the quote is from Professor Kath, uh, Catherine Gale, and she right. writes, one of the, one of the Our ones. findings show that even low levels of distress, below the level usually considered clinically significant, appear right. to increase the risk of developing a chronic disease. Mm-hmm. So intervention to reduce symptoms of anxiety and depression may help to prevent the onset of these illnesses for some people. That's right. Yesterday... Or the day before yesterday when we talked about suicide, Mm -hmm. we talked about public health issues. These are preventable diseases. All four of them are preventable. Um, But it takes lifestyle changes, Mm -hmm. okay? And it takes, 
you know, we, we talk about the four right. that we talk about, and yeah. one of the four is stress management. Right. You have to learn how to manage your stress. Right. Stress is an incredibly destructive um, agent mm -hmm. um, that we tolerate. Yeah. I mean, we, we don't mind going without sleep, and we don't mind going without nu proper nutrition, and we, we have these stressors in our right. lives that we sort of accept and live with. Mm -hmm. it, the body's not meant to have that onslaught right. and that chronic daily um, um, injury. Right. I mean, there's no other word for it. Yeah. We talked about Dr. Leslie Korn a few, mm -hmm. a few days ago, um, and she talks about stubbing your toe every day. Imagine stubbing your toe every day. Right. And she said that's what these nutritional deficits, eating sugar, uh, having stress, not exercising, not sleeping, it's like, think of it as stubbing your toe every day. It's not right. something you would do. Right. You're doing the same thing with stress, even low levels of stress. Right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, so the, definitely read this article. It's from uh, Medical News Today, and this right. is, it's out of the UK, and it talks about you know, the importance and, and risk. And you have some statistics that you were going to present yeah, they, because they're pretty, pretty significant. Yeah, and I like the way they did it because they talk about and I don't, it doesn't explain how they did that, um, how they decided who's low, mm -hmm. low stress, moderate stress, and high stress. Right. Okay. But the numbers are astonishing. Right. You know, when you, when you look at the numbers, because, for example, with arthritis, if you have low levels of distress, you have a 57% more likelihood that you're going to encounter, you're going to get symptoms of arthritis, right. joint pain. So, so a 57% increase in risk for arthritis as compared to people who don't have stress. Right. So yeah. those who, who don't report any, mm -hmm. uh, even low levels of stress. Right. Um, if you have just mild stress, mild, right. you 57% you increased it's risk. A, that to me was, a st I mean, I was That's surprised massive. when I saw that number. If you have moderate stress, it's 72%. And if you have high stress, it's 110%. Right. So big numbers. Cardiovascular disease. Mm -hmm. Um, low distress, 46%, moderate, 77 high, 189 Right. Now, that's a, that's a, I mean, high stress and cardiovascular disease is a very strong right. relationship. Yeah. So, so, so high stress is, is a major issue, you know, right. because your risk really it increases. But even with the low levels of stress, again, a 46% mm -hmm. increase in right. risk for um, cardiovascular mm -hmm. problems just mm -hmm. with low levels of stress, that's, that's right. huge. Yeah, and I'm gonna have to look into this lung, the COPD, the lung diseases. Um, I don't know as much mm -hmm. about those, uh, but I'm, I'm gonna have to find out because um, asthma and other pulmonary diseases are a huge problem here in right. Florida because of the allergies. Right. But you wonder about what these other stressors uh, like moderate stress, 125%, high stress, 148% increase likelihood right. that you're going to have some kind of lung disease. Right. And I, hadn't, I, I don't know as much about that one. Well, in, in, well, but if you think about all of them, uh, even asthma, right. you know, that's an inflammatory. Right. You know, because you, right. you have the inflammation of the, uh, the, the bronchi airways, right. uh, mm -hmm. that, that creates the, the difficulties breathing. Right. So it makes sense that conditions that increase inflammation, increase stress, mm -hmm. are going to potentially increase your risk for some of these conditions. Right. And, you know, there, there are medications that you can take for all these things. There are anti-inflammatory mm -hmm. agents and there are the, all kinds of drugs you can take. But let's go back a step. That's why we call it a public health issue. Right. Um, let's go back a step and learn how to deal with these things, learn how to prevent them mm -hmm. with proper nutrition, mm -hmm. exercise. Mm -hmm sleep and stress management. Yeah, so. absolutely. So, mm -hmm. all right. Well, check out this article. Yeah, take a it's look really at good. that one. Mm -hmm. All right. Until next time, stay happy, stay healthy, and forget to be afraid. Thanks for sharing this episode of the Mental Breakdown and Psych Ridge podcast. Be sure to check out the show notes for links to follow us on Twitter and subscribe to our YouTube channel, where you will find all of our previous podcasts and much more. We would be honored if you would become a patron through patreon.com, where any donation you can manage will go to the development and creation of more content. Just visit patreon.com slash the mental breakdown for more information. Thanks again for listening. Have an awesome day, and we look forward to being back in your feed tomorrow morning.